Hey internet, welcome to Worldview Everlasting, your favorite YouTube addiction, and this is The Fix. It's a long one today, but it's pretty important, it can't be helped, so buckle in and get ready to be challenged. We got a question from a viewer in response to a lightning cut done by Pastor Richard about shrinking congregations and how to handle the issue. For over half a century now, new prophets have been crying out first about the need to greater and more mission to fix the world, and now, more recently, about the need for greater and and more mission to fix the church. If only they were just crying out that we might send more preachers into the world to proclaim the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done, and if only they were just crying out about better equipping the confessing body of believers to know, understand, relish, and think with their catechism echo of the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, that is, to know what they believe and why they believe it, things would be okay. But sadly, what they are usually all about is gaining power for themselves within the congregation and radically altering the face of the congregation to better imitate the revivalists whose glory and vain honor they want for themselves. So they say, look, shrinking churches, the church must change or die. And the faithful often respond by following them or, rightly, trying to not have their crown stolen, to not let the pure words about Jesus be taken from their ancient songs and rites, to not turn the church into a marketplace for self-improvement and whitewashed movements. But often the faithful are just as ignorant of the real reason for the decline in American churches. It's not just the postmodern storm of philosophy that has ransacked our institutions and is teaching our children to be morally ignorant, logically incapable, media brainwashed parrots of the spirit of this age, although it is that too at the cost of 30 or 40 grand a year. But it is also that plain, hard, scientific, not moralistic, not spiritual, not an option for you to believe in or not fact that we aren't having enough children to survive. Now, the guilty conscience is already really angry at me just for that line and getting ready to hide behind straw man shouts of what about Pentecost and having children isn't the only way to do a mission, as if that's anything close to what I just said. But I gotta say to you, straw man lover who doesn't love babies as much as you should and wants to bury your head in the sand and wait for the Muslims to overrun us through their willingness to breed, well, you can throw a tantrum fit about how your decisions to seek a nice home and a nice car and more freedom for yourself is justified all you want, it's not gonna change the cold, hard, scientific fact of demographics, which, oddly, the church growth prophets are always wanting to say they want to pay attention to, although they usually just mean they want to follow the white, moneyed middle class as they plant their rec center congregations. Relevancy fail. The brutal facts of the 40-year decline of the LCMS can be laid in part at the feet of the liberalizing tendencies to play Protestant baseball with the Protestants who are far better at it than we are, and it can be laid at the feet of ceasing to diversify ourselves in the marketplace Place by abandoning our authentic reason to exist as something distinct from, say, Finney and Wesley and Rome. But it also can be proven to mirror in stark, clean lines the failure to care enough about our children to bother having them. Now, you can read up on these numbers in the convention report made by President Matthew Harrison in the LCMS workbook for this summer. It's kind of hard to get to, though, even though it's free and online, but it is rather phenomenal as a whole, and it's not only about this demythology of the myth of our decline by being honest about demographics. But the section on demographics is wonderfully helpful. So try, if you're not too much of a bigot to have your ideas challenged by facts, to follow with me here as I relay to you both the numbers and then my own opinion on the matter. Here's the facts. No LCMS district has shown increase in baptized adults or babies in 20 years. None. Even in the districts who have planted the most congregations in the last 40 years, this fact still remains. Even in districts that mirror each other geographically, like Iowa East and West, but have, frankly, very different beliefs about how to do church, you know, things like closed communion and stuff, their losses remained identical. Last year, it took conservative Southern Baptists 47 adults to gain one new adult convert. It took the LCMS 44 adults, which actually means we're doing better than the Baptists. It took the Mormons, the giants of door-to-door -door mission, 40 adults, which isn't so far from us either. But those numbers, even at 40 to 1, are not replacement levels for a denomination to survive into the next generation. So what can we do? What fixes this? What's the problem? The crazy thing is that when you start comparing the demographics of birth rates across the U.S., where Americans of European descent, uh, hello LCMS, are just not bearing children at the replacement rate of 2.1 per family, the number without which 
which no civilization can survive, you find that our following of the culture in delaying marriage and making education more important and allowing the debt we create to then make us fearful of having kids because kids cost money and I like to eat out becomes at least part of the problem that we cannot ignore. So check this out. On a county by county study for each district of the LCMS, guess what we find? The district with the highest birth rate in the last 10 years, South Dakota, is the best performing district in church growth, which sadly is still a 4% decline. And guess what? The district with the lowest birth rate, New Jersey, ah, New Jersey, showed the greatest losses at 33%. Performance lines up almost exactly from top to bottom with birth rate. Now the guilty conscience cries foul. No one likes repentance and forgiveness when it really hurts. More straw men abound about breeding, old fashionedness, and the red flag of birth control. That's got to be raised. That's legalism, Patrick. More will yet say. I'm going to stab you in the face, Patrick. But all of this is just the hard heart searing its conscience to avoid the facts. God likes babies. Babies. And we, for some reason, don't. We like money. The brutal fact of church and history is that this promise is for you and your children. And that if you want to see more adult converts, having more children means having more confessors to go out and find those converts. And it means that all this nonsense about abandoning our Lutheran heritage because mission demands it is just that. Nonsense. Just admit that you're driven by your passions and want your garage band to have a captive audience. Just admit that you care more about the music than the words. Just admit that you learn more from Peter Drucker than from St. Paul. It's okay. That kind of honesty would help us all out a lot. But fighting, blaming, and fear-mongering over how best to do church while ignoring the fact that we no longer really believe in the sixth commandment in its entirety will only continue our decline. It's about faith first. It's about trust in God's word first. And the sixth commandment is part of God's word. It's not about women being second class, but about women being the gem whose first name was Eve, which means life because she was the mother of the living. Because without her uniquely diverse gift to the world, we have no future here. Now, just so you're not confused, I have used President Harrison's facts from his study, but I do not represent him, nor is my opinion his. You should go read his own report if you're going to blame him for this. But if you want to know how Lutherans should respond to shrinking churches, I tell you, listen carefully to the prophets who went before us, the real ones, when in their own exile, in a land of darkness were told by God himself, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and father sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there. Don't be diminished. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you shall have peace. Don't let your diviners deceive you, neither listen to your dreams, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. For know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord God, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you hope and a future. And I will turn again toward your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you. And I will bring you again to the place from where I caused you to be carried away captive. That is, back to the life of the world to come as our bodies are raised. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is ascended, Christ will come again, and this promise is for you and your children. It's good news. Rock em. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, 10, or $25 is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click Donate Now. Yeah.